Are you going to tell me what it is we're celebrating? I made eighty dollars today. Two home facials, cash in hand. Yeah. We're a two-income family now. Sounds bloody good to me. So I uh, thought we might do a little bit of celebrating tonight. I'll be in that. <laughs> Wait a minute. You know, no, we can't do that. Why? Why not? I've got enough hassles with the boss as it is. I don't need any more. You never know. Never rings at this time of night. Not for weeks on. Mm. Mm. Mm, there's no problem, is there? Okay. Come and get me. Okay. <laughs> oh, kill it! Yeah. Mount Thomas Police. Yes. Yes. Right, I see. Yes. Breaking into. And you don't know how to turn this thing off. No. But the owner's left here with the keys. He's gone off down to his sister's place down on the coast for a couple of weeks. But there's a girl who comes in in the mornings and gets a key off me and opens up. And then she switches on the alarm at night and drops a key back. Well, this girl, you got a name for her? Julie. Julie. Surname? No. Right. You don't have an address? Oh, down off the main road a bit there somewhere, but don't know exactly. You don't know anyone who can come in here tonight and keep the premises secure? No, mate, and don't look at me. I'm going back to bed. Well, do you know how much they took? No, nah, but the way I see it, they broke in, took a bit of small stuff and got out of there. I was on the phone pretty fast. Yeah. Mount Thomas Police. Can you do me a favour? PJ's not home. Can you track him down for me, see if he can get over here? What are you talking about? PJ's probably out with a girlfriend or something. Why not check the pub for PJ? Now? Well, well, what's he want me to do there? I think he wants you to jump in your car and go and catch a few crooks. I'll be guessing, though. I'll smash and grab for eyes. Look, they'll be long gone. Tell him I can do it in the morning. That's what I would have thought, too. I'll examine the evidence in a professional manner in the light of day. Night, Rose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Another drink? A couple of hours? Yeah, well, I can't leave the place till the premises are secure. There's a lot of valuable stuff still here. Stuff the valuable stuff. What? Ah, oh, forget it. I guess I'll see you when I see you. Oh, hold on, Rose. What? What are you wearing? Not a lot. Why? I'm missing out on the celebration. Oh, for God's sake, Wayne. We're not going to start talking dirty in the middle of the night, are we? I'm tired and I've got a facial book first thing in the morning. 6.15am and you're with the home of country music, 3TM Mount Thomas. One thing I know, and it be no lie, if you never ever live. Never, ever, ever, ever die. But I know, I don't know why. What can I say? I just say goodbye. Goodbye. Excuse me, sir. This black's sleeping enough. Piss off, son, all right? Have you been drinking during the night, sir? No, I haven't. Right, well, I'd like you to take a breath test, please, sir. Piss off, I said. Are you refusing a breath test, sir? Look, I've been in my car parked asleep all bloody night until you've just woke me up. Well, you are in your car and you are behind the wheel, sir. I repeat, are you refusing a breath test? Why don't you listen, son, when you're told to piss off? Oh, Nick! Uh, never hit ladies. Not often, anyway. You're under arrest. Or cuff him. Well, 
Once you're built and you seal ISIS. Oh, I'll handle this one, Maggie. You can put in a few hours in the cells. Do you reckon you can handle him without me? Oh, look, Nick, it's what we ask people to do. Sleep it off if they've had a few drinks. She's on my side. You assaulted a police officer, sir. How old do you think I am? 57. How are you going to feel taking this to court saying there's a whole bloke flattening your big mate here? How's he going to feel? I think he'll live with it. Sit down. <clears throat> What's your name? John Francis Egan. Known as Blackjack. so much time to myself in ages. Greg's been away so much. He travels a lot. Yeah, he's a commercial traveller. Always on the road. Come out here. Must be lonely for you. Yeah. What's he travelling? Well, oh, look, oh, what's the point? Anyone around here will tell you if you really want to know. He's been away a lot because he's been in and out of jail. You know, he did something stupid early on, and then because he'd been in jail, he couldn't get a job, so he did something else stupid. It's easy enough. Oh, yeah. Well, he's OK now. He knows he can't do anything else or put a foot out of line, because otherwise he'll be in for a long, long time. He made the decision that it would be better if we tried to get by on the doll than the kids would have a dad. And, you know, the day after he said that, he got a job. <laughs> as a plumber's mate. They're putting in a sewer. You know, it's quite good money. Your skin's a bit dry here. Oh, sorry, I was rattling on. Oh, don't be silly. It's all part of it. You can just lie here and relax so you can talk. Mm. A facial should be therapy for the whole of you. You got kids? No, not yet. One day. Mm. What's it like being married to a cop? Much the same as being married to a crim, I reckon. They both work nut shifts. <laughs> Traffic noise, pretty good. Boss, is that who I think it is? Who? Black Jack Egan. Oh, what a name. I never saw him once or twice. Well, it is, you know. Hello, sir. Well, do, you, do you remember me? Patrick Hashem. PJ. Oh, PJ. Oh, I was with you on a siege in Gardner Street. A couple of girls got shot, negotiators weren't making any headway. You took a gun in there and scared the guy into surrendering, brought everyone out. PJ, yeah, yeah, rings the bell. Oh, I was just a constable at the time. I was <laughs> out of the academy. So, what brings you here? He flattened Nick this morning. <sighs> Nick? He yeah, got up me nose. Mr. Egan, can you sign this? It's your bar release form. You want to get rid of me? What if I don't sign? Then we'll have to put you back in the lockup. I'll think about it. Thanks anyway, sweetheart. You know, I think I like you. I love your earrings, Ross. What sort of stones are they? I don't really know. Just gemstones or something. <laughs> You done? Mmm. You know, they look like topaz. That's my birthstone. Greg's got me a pair of earrings a bit like that for the anniversary. <laughs> Silly bugger, he hid them on top of the wardrobe. That's where I hide things. Did you know you found them? Oh, no, I spoiled the surprise. But I keep on sneaking in here to have a look while he's at work. 
I just don't know what stones they are, though. That's why I was wondering about yours. Oh, mine aren't anything special. Here, have a look. Oh, wow. They're really beautiful. Try one if you like. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they look like garnets. Mm. I wouldn't really know though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's green. Ah, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Roz. I'm Greg. Hi. Mm. Mm, skin feels heaps better. Mm. All smooth as silk. Well, <laughs> hey, listen, I could come back and do your hair if you like for the big anniversary night. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Roz? Roz? You know? Yeah, yeah, I get a break at 12.30. I thought we might go out for lunch or something. Maybe over to the pub. Look, Wayne, I've got a facial at one. Why one? I don't know. She suggested a time and I said yes. Couldn't you make it two? No. Well, if you made it two, we might get home for a little while. Look, Wayne, you've got your job and sometimes it takes you out all night. But that's your job, I guess. And I've got my business. Now, I know it's only a small business, but I depend on people recommending me to their friends. And I'm not going to start messing clients around just because you... Mel Thomas, please. Constable Patterson speaking. Yes. Yeah, no, I'll call him right away. Thank you. Rose, can you hold on a minute? Asking what these lists are? Uh, stolen property. They come in and we put them on file. When someone gets around to filing them. And uh, these are from last night. Last night? Uh, the, the break and enter? Nah, that's old stuff. I haven't got any lists from last night yet. Wayne's probably talking to the owner now. Hey, PJ. Yep. Yeah. He wasn't, in fact, over the limit, was he? So it's pretty simple. Drop the assault charge. No. Drop the assault charge and the bail form's no longer an issue. You think that's what he's angling for? It's logical, but I'd have to say I don't think that's it. What's it? Well, I wouldn't know. But what's he doing here? I mean, Blackjack was pure inner city. The trots, SP bookies, illegal gambling houses, standover men. I mean, he knew it all. Now, you'd have to say he was a bit of a legend, wouldn't you, boss? I might. I might also have to say he was something of a show pony who sometimes took the credit other good men were entitled to. Yes, but I've seen him go into a house with a rifle when a siege was going on. And that time it worked, but there are other times I know of when it didn't. Like the time a backup man was killed because he felt he had to risk his neck and follow Egan. Or the time he shot and wounded a bloke for resisting arrest and it was later proved it was a wrong identification. No, well, looks like I've touched the nerve. Maybe. No, he's got a lot of courage. I won't argue with that. I'd just rather not have him as a permanent resident in my lockup. You could look me out a couple of books, magazines, Totten Guy. Yeah, sure, I could uh, make the odd bet for you if you like. Well, oh, thanks. You smoke? Gave it away last year. Doctor said I had to. Well, just let me know if you need anything, eh? Yeah, what, how often do they, uh... uh someone look through the peephole now and then just to make sure you haven't necked yourself. Signal if you want something. What's the food like? Well, it depends on who's cooking. Now, if it's Roz, you're OK. And if not? Well, there's this old girl working here who doesn't believe in spoiling the prisoners. On the other hand... What? Well, there's a good can of lunch at the pub. Chrissy does an excellent steak sandwich. Smart bastard, aren't you? It's on me. Yeah. Be out for a while, boss. G'day. G'day. You see, 
The thing is, this person showed me these earrings in confidence. Are you sure they're the ones on the list? Well, it was just a photo, but, well, they look the same. I mean, I'm sure I'm supposed to be the good cop's wife and tell Wayne. But what'll happen if I do? They'll check it out. She'll know I said something. And what happens if they arrest him again and put him away? Her life's a wreck and all for the sake of a bloody pair of earrings. And I'm part of it. I tell you what, it's really hard to believe that some bloke who gives something he got in a break and enter to his wife for a present. She's going to be wearing it all around town for a start. Yeah, that is funny, isn't it? So, so that's a good reason to think I got it wrong. I mean, he wouldn't be that dumb, would he? On the other hand, crims do dumb things, that's why they get caught. Yeah. No, forget it. It's none of my business, nothing to do with me. <laughs> Sounds like you've made yourself a decision. Well, anyway, it's just not fair running off and telling people what someone said to you while they were having a facial. I mean, my clients just relax and talk, and that's what they're supposed to do. If I pass it on to Wayne, it'd be like, huh, a bit like passing on the secrets of the confessional. If I ever have a facial with you, I'll have to watch myself. Try not to reveal all the secrets of my steamy past. I'll give you a discount. What? On well, the confession or the facial? Both. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> I've got to go. I've got another job. Congratulate me. You're doing well. Couple of beers, please, Chris. Ever heard of Black Jack Egan? That's him, is it? Mm-hmm. I'd have expected him to be bigger than that. Oh, he flattened Nick. Did he? Oh, poor Nick. That'll take a bit of living down. Yeah, you bet it will. You shouldn't let it get to you, Nick. Yeah, well, it does. You were off guard, off balance. Who knew that? So? So you shouldn't let it get to you. Thanks. So you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, never figured much on retirement. Live a life like mine, you don't give it much thought. Well, then Susie died last year, lung cancer. Now, we're both heavy smokers. I guess it got her, not me. Well, not so far, anyway. That's good. Oh, thanks, love. Because I could have stayed longer in the force, but it seemed like time to go. And then one of my daughters, a bloke ran out and left her with a couple of little kids. Uh, it seemed logical to, for her to move in with me. I had a big house, a big yard, good for kids. So what brings you here? Not much. Just travel on through. Looking for some fishing. Ah, uh, discovering a few of the pleasures of early retirement, eh? Too right. Oop, here comes the boy soprano. Having lunch, Nick? Well, not today, thank you. The coppers from St David's just rang. They want a list of the stuff that was knocked off from the antique shop. Uh, thanks, mate. Oh, Nick, uh, Jack's staying with us tonight, OK? I, well, I didn't think you'd mind. I do. Sorry, mate, I tried. Trouble with the uniform blokes. What is? Never have the proper respect for plain clothes. <laughs> I don't trust that thing. It's going to wait till the right psychological moment and then it's going to ring. Uh, was that the right psychological moment? No, got in early. Yeah, Mount Thomas Police, Constable Patterson speaking. Yeah. I see. What's his condition? Or well, can he give a description? No, 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 I got that. Yeah, green ute, no rego. Right. Oh, don't tell me you have to go out. No, 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 that was at St David's. There's been another break and enter at an antique store. A whole bunch of jewellery stolen. Only this time, a night watchman disturbed him and they hit him over the head with a length of iron pipe, fractured his skull. How bad is he? I don't know. They said he's still out of it. But he's going to be OK? Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. You never can tell, though, with head injuries, you know? They can cause permanent damage. Um, I'm just going to ring this in. Hey, Ross, how are you? Listen, I, uh, I think I saw these earrings. Oh, yeah, you sure? Well, no, but... What do you think you saw? At a client's place. Aha. Uh -huh. Got a name? Elaine Duncan. Oh, yeah? Greg Duncan's wife, eh? Listen, PJ, I'd really rather she didn't know I'd said anything, or anyone else for that matter. Fair enough. So, will you... Yeah, yeah, I'll look into it. Thanks. It's okay. 
Are you looking for me? Uh, no, I just came to see PJ. PJ? Yeah, it wasn't anything much. Well, if it is Greg and he's got anything more stashed away... If it's Greg, he'll be pretty jumpy. He's got a lot at stake. Better get a statement from Roz before we go for a warrant. OK. Oh, there's your mate. Maybe his hangover's anything like mine. <coughs> hey, you got a coffee for an old mate? Have this one. Oh, thanks. You ought to know my dad, Pat Doyle. Yeah, good man, he's doing. Oh, he's still with the force. That's great. Hey, listen, uh, you got a, an Aspro or something around? Uh, I'll have a look in the first aid box. You were uh, matching drinks with PJ? Yeah, pretty stupid. I never can't take it anymore. <laughs> Nobody's can. Mm. Hi. Hello. Sorry, Roz, I've uh, been talking to the boss. We need you on paper on this one. It was a tip-off, PJ. I said I didn't want to get involved. No, you'd have to say that to the boss. I said it to you. Well, he might be a bit crooked on Wayne. Why Wayne? Oh, you know. I don't think that's very fair. Sorry, Roz. There's no point in dipping your toe in the water unless you're prepared to go for the swim. You're a bastard, PJ. But an attractive bastard. <laughs> a conceited bastard. Oh, hang on. I've got another appointment with Elaine. I'd better cancel it. No, no, leave things exactly as they are, okay? You sign on the dotted line, and I'll try and keep you out of it if I can. Okay. okay. Thanks, PJ. Ross's statement, boss. Good, eh? Is he going to take up permanent residence here now? Well, I reckon he's finding retirement a bit lonely. Nah, no, that's reading between the lines. I'm not running a retirement home for bully boys. Why didn't you tell me about the earring? For precisely this reason. I didn't want it to become official and now it is. Yeah, well, I reckon it makes me look like a bit of a fool. Uh, why? Why? My wife has information about a robbery, so she bypasses me and goes straight to PJ. I reckon that makes me look like a fool. But PJ was the detective on the case. And I was the attending officer. Yeah, don't we know it. Anyway, it might not even be the same case. Yeah, well, next time I'd appreciate... Next time? There won't be a next time. Next time I have any sort of information about a crime possible crime. I'm going to keep my mouth shut tight. There. What do you think? It's terrific. Well, have a good night, won't you? Yeah, thanks. You okay? Yeah, sure. Hey, just a sec. Sorry, Mrs. Duncan, we've got a warrant to search. What for? Pay me some other time, Elena. I've got to go. We've had some info that led us to believe that Greg might be back to his old ways. Well, he's not. He's just not. Well, we'll take a look anyway. That's the warrant. Why don't I start with the bedroom? Elaine. Compare the two. I bought them. Paid 150 bucks. Well, who from? A guy at the pub. Oh, has this guy got a name? Did you get a receipt? I paid cash. Cash receipt? Well, he didn't give me one. Did you know him? I've seen him around a few times before. So what about a name? Any witnesses? Well, Chris might have noticed. And if she didn't? 
We need a name, Greg. These are stolen goods. We've got a local break and enter and a robbery with violence. We can try and for size. He'd be gone for a long time. He says he bought him at the pub. But the funny thing is, he can't remember a face or a name. He didn't steal them, I know that. Well, maybe he didn't. Maybe he just fenced the stuff for someone else and helped himself to the earrings. Nice anniversary present, huh? But it's these local jobs we're keen to know about, Elaine. Now, if he'd help us out with the earrings, well, we'd be more inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt. But as it is... Let me talk to him. On my own. Elaine. Take as long as you need. How's it looking? I'm just not prepared to be a dog. Well, who is he? Is he a mate of yours or what? No. Then why not? I can't afford to be a dog. PJ, I'm, I'm pretty sure I made a mistake. No, 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 no. I mean, I really believe that he bought the earrings. Uh, yeah, okay. How are we doing, Elaine? He wants to talk to you. Good girl. He comes into the pub, I'll give you the nod. No names? I'll give you the nod, that's it. Done. Why me, B? I'm here on business, Jack, okay? You think I don't know that? How often do you drink here alone at this time of day? Why me, B, and I'll be cover for you. Excuse me, Mr. Gilly. Detective Senior Constable Hashem. Like a word if you don't mind. How'd you go? No bloody good. We went over his car and his room at the pub. He travels in jewellery and stuff like that, doesn't he? Yeah, but he mostly carries catalogues with him. And a few pieces you did have with him, he's got a mile of paperwork for each one. He's been coming here for a while, hasn't he? Friend of Chris's. Yeah, but Greg Duncan definitely nodded him. You know what's going on, don't you? Your mates had a bet each way. He's agreed to nod the bloke for you, then he's put through a muffled call on the public phone to say the cops are going to be all over you in a couple of hours, mate. Could be right. Any other assistance I can offer? Thanks, we'll take it from here. Didn't like that, did he? Where is he? What? What do you mean? Didn't he do what you asked him to do? Oh, we think he hedged his bets. Tipped off the suspect at the same time. Why would he bother to do that? I don't bother, I know why. So he's put me in a pretty bad mood all round. Look, I just know he didn't have anything to do with any robbery. Yeah, well, I gave him a chance to prove that lie and he made me look like an idiot. Now, since he had those earrings in his possession, I could pull him in and charge him with receiving stolen property. No. And with his record, boy, that's not going to look good in court, is it? I wouldn't like his chances. And what about you? Do you know where he got them from? No, I don't. Remember, I can charge you as an accessory. You should think about the kids. You know I'm not an accessory. Otherwise, why would I have told that nosy bitch? Where's Greg working today? Come on, Elaine. I'll wait in there, Greg. Have a bit of a think while well, I sort out the receiving charge. No, no, yeah, Chris. No, Nick and I'll be right over. Yep, ta. Disturbance at the pub. Seems your mate Blackjack Egan was involved. Picked a couple of younger blokes by the sounds of it. You're trying to prove now. Wouldn't need to be a psychologist to make a guess. Elaine, I haven't charged him yet. But I'll give you a chance to see what you can do. Gotta be a 
back in the lockup. Is that what you want? Well, the accommodation's not bad, especially since the pub's full and I fancy the motel. Of course, there's always room in your lounge. No, thank you. Guess it's back in the lockup. I was loading any charges, it. Uh, ruffled a few feathers, eh? What do you want, Egan? We've got better things to do with our time than locking up ex-coppers, mate. Yeah. Yeah, They say you nodded him, and they say you also tipped him off. Yeah. They say he's been around a long time. They say he hasn't got a criminal record. If you say he bought them, he'll have the documents to back it up, then that's it. No. Then he is a fence. A good one. He doesn't do stupid things. <laughs> Not like me. I'll go along with that. Don't you know I would have been just as happy with a pair of $15 earrings from the flea market? I didn't think you'd go shun on the cop's wife. Yeah, that was pretty stupid. But we keep on coming back to it. You've got to give him a name and you've got to back it up with a statement. I can't do that. I think you have to. Look, it's not a small operation. Oh, how do you know that? I know. If I give this guy up, someone will come after me. Sooner or later. If I turn dog, that's what'll happen. <laughs> That'll be dog eat dog, right? <laughs> Roughly speaking, yeah. <laughs> so we go away. Where? Oh, I don't know, anywhere. We change our name, deed poll, whatever. But you got a life here. All your friends. I don't want a life here while you're inside. Well, it's only a fencing charge. It won't be that long. Six months. But didn't you hear him talking about fitting out for that couple of break and enters that happened around here? What about that old guy that's in a coma? What if he comes to and identifies you? I wasn't there. Look, you know, don't you? I've been digging drainage holes and laying sewer pipes. I wasn't there. I know that. But when you put a foot out of line and you've done that, they reckon they can reel you in. If you go inside again, Greg, I don't know whether you'll find me when you come back out. Me and the kids. But you'll come away with me. If you give him a statement, yes, I will. Look, the rent's only paid to the end of the week. I'll go home and start packing now. But you just treat him right from here on in, otherwise I'll cut your nuts off. Elena. So is everything okay? Oh, yeah, it was uh, routine, not a problem. They were just checking out a few thefts. You expected in my tray? That's why I keep my paperwork in order. <laughs> Look, I'll be through again in a couple of weeks, yeah? Excuse me, sir. We'd like to search your car again. Uh, we have a warrant, sir, remember? It still applies. We'll do it in the station yard. It's private there. Constable Patterson will ride with you. I'll take care of your bags. Come on, Jack, let's go and get this sorted out. <laughs> Looking for jewellery and stuff, eh? Yeah. Hang on a minute.
Give us that screwdriver a minute, will you? Come on, I'm not going to knock anyone on the head with it. Sorry about this, mate, but uh, I'm a born sticky beak. Fake oil cooler. Pretty neat. Only takes a Phillips head screwdriver to get it on and off. Pity about the oily rag, though. <laughs> Bloke like him wouldn't do his own mechanical stuff. So why the oily rag? And how come the oil stains under his fingernails? Well, we're doing pretty nicely over here. Jack, come on, I'll buy you a drink. If you can keep your hands off the clientele. <laughs> Perhaps I could come out of retirement, find myself a niche in a place like this. Doing what? Offer my broad knowledge of the criminal element. Well, you don't have that much of a criminal element. You'd be bored to sobs in a week. You reckon I'd get in your way, huh? Yeah, I reckon you would. Beer? Yeah, thanks. Two pots, thanks, Chris. You ever think much about retirement? A bit. It's not something I want to face up to that much, but at least I'd be retiring here. I have a few things in mind I want to do. No one fixing to settle any debts, eh? No, not. <laughs> There's a few with personal grudges coming out of the slammer now. Or about to. Well, that's not new, is it? No. Never used to worry about it much, but lately I've been jumping at shadows, looking for the sawn off shotgun, pulling out from a parked car or through a fence. I think about the mess it's made of summer blacks. I even thought about taking myself out. One shot, quick and clean. Rather than someone else doing a worse job. Not much of a reward for a life like yours, though, is it? Yeah, so what? I've enjoyed most of my life. There's nothing else you want to be doing. You wouldn't like to travel a bit? The Pacific? New Zealand? Yeah, I've got no ambition to travel. Fishing's more my line. <laughs> well, we haven't got much of that around here, either. Yellow belly, few redfin, pretty small stuff. Uh, I'd rather rock fishing, you know. Pounding waves, a bit of danger. Sounds right. <laughs> No job today, Ross. I had two and then cancelled. Why? I think that it, um, that person involved in that thing I told you about, I think she put out the word on me. So it was bad news or gave her a bad facial or something, I don't know. You got expected a bit in a town this size. Cops. Bloody hell. People will forget it, you know. In a town this size? They do. Nick, I'm going to ask you to do something. Back off with Jack Egan. Drop the charge. Why? Why? What's he going to do? Zoom off to the next town and punch out the next poor bugger who pulls him over. Drop the charge. Yeah, all right. But you're wrong. You know that, don't you? I mean, going to court, maybe a few months on the other side, that'd shut him down a bit. That'd give him a bit of perspective. Not much of a reward for 30 years in the force, though, is it? In the front line. The old blokes, eh? They stick together in the end. Oh, yeah, we do. When you get to be an old bloke yourself, you might understand why. I hear you charge Ted Gilly. Yeah, he's been chatting away. Giving us a good lead on the last job here and the one over in St David's. A few others thrown in. How long will he get? Uh, three to five. He's a pretty substantial fence in his own right. It was a friend of mine. How good a friend? None of your business. Well, the sort of friend you see from time to time when he comes through town. I liked his company. Sorry we stuffed that up for you, Chrissy. Hey, PJ sent you this. Do me a favour. Hmm? Take it back to him and break it over his head for me. Why? Look, the boss is very pleased. Pleased with you and with me too. I reckon we should crack this open and, um, celebrate. No, thanks. 
Come on. Look, I don't see your problem. You reported a suspected crime and you were right. I know the Youngs didn't come from this particular robbery, but they pointed the way to what was going on back here. Hey, we really cleaned up on this. Roz, I don't see your problem. That's because you're a cop. Ooh, you really know how to hurt a guy. Come on. It's only booze. Make you feel better. Don't say cheers. I won't. Are you going to tell me what it is we're celebrating? I made $80 today. Two home facials, cash in hand. Yeah? We're a two-income family now. Sounds bloody good to me. So I uh, thought we might do a little bit of celebrating tonight. I'll be in that. enough hassles with the boss as it is. I oh, don't need any more. You'd never know. Never rings at this time of night. Not for weeks on... <laughs> There's no problem. Is there? Okay. Come and get me. Mount Thomas Police. Yes. Yes. Right, I see. Yes. Break and enter. And you don't know how to turn this thing off. No. But the owner's left you with the keys. He's gone off down to his sister's place down on the coast for a couple of weeks. But well, there's a girl who comes in in the mornings and gets a key off me and opens up. And then she switches on the alarm at night and drops a key back. Well, this girl, you got a name for it? Julie. Julie. Surname? No. Right. You don't have an address? Oh, down off the main road a bit there somewhere, but don't know exactly. And you don't know anyone who can come in here tonight and keep the premises secure? No, mate, and don't look at me. I'm going back to bed. Well, do you know how much they took? No, nah, but the way I see it... They broke in, took a bit of small stuff, and got out of there. I was on the phone pretty fast. Hey. Hello, Mount Thomas Police. Can you do me a favour? PJ's not home. Can you track him down for me, see if he can get over here? What are you talking about? PJ's probably out with a girlfriend or something. Why not check the pub for PJ? Now? What's he want me to do there? I think he wants you to jump in your car and go and catch a few crooks. I'll be guessing, though. A smash and grab, Rise. Look, they'll be long gone. Tell him I can do it in the morning. That's what I would have thought, too. At which point I'll examine the evidence in a professional manner in the light of day. Night, Rise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Another drink? A couple of hours. Yeah, well, I can't leave the place till the premises are secure. There's a lot of valuable stuff still here. Stuff the valuable stuff. What? Ah, oh, forget it. I guess I'll see you when I see you. Oh, hold on, Roz. What? What are you wearing? Not a lot. Why? I'm missing out on the celebration. Oh, for God's sake, Wayne. We're not going to start talking dirty in the middle of the night, are we? I'm tired and I've got a facial book first thing in the morning. 6.15am and you're with the home of country music, 3TM Mount Thomas. What do I know? And it be no lie. If you never ever live, you'll never ever 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 die. But I know, I don't know why. What can I say? I just say goodbye. Goodbye. Excuse me, 